In this video, we're going to carry on designing an intake manifold, this time geared towards CNC machining. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video we're going to carry on our K20, K24 intake manifold series where we're learning how to design different types of intakes. In this video we're going to start to talk about CNC intakes, so parts that are going to be completely machined on a CNC mill. Now, this way is probably going to be the most expensive. The first method that we looked at where we take off-the-shelf components like a 5-inch plenum, and some runners, that is going to be the quickest, the easiest, and the cheapest for you to do at home. The second one that we took a look at, this formed intake here, that is going to be a bit more labor intensive, not necessarily more cost, but it's going to take more time for you to build the wooden buck, to hammer the parts over, to make sure that they fit well, to weld it all together. So it's going to take a little bit more time. The cost might be a little bit higher, simply based on the fact that we have a second plate that needs to be water jet. Uh, but other than that, the cost is going to be very similar. And again, it all depends on what your end goal is. Now, the last method is really sort of a catch-all. And by that, I really mean that it's not just a bucket that everything can fit into. There are many different ways that we could approach this manifold by using the CNC method. So one way is to machine everything, top and bottom, and weld it together. One way is to still use off-the-shelf runners and plates and then machine just the plenum part and weld it together. We can design it so that it can be bolted together. And as I mentioned in our last video, that's a little bit more complicated because then we have to worry about the seal between. We have to make a custom O-ring or a gasket. We also have to worry about the number of bolts going around so that it is uh, actually seals, so the material likely needs to be thicker. So there are all sorts of different problems that are associated with that. And there are other ways which we can CNC everything as individual pieces and weld it all together. There are companies that do that. Uh, I think Autosports Engineering has a CNC kit where you actually get all the components. You can do a single or a dual injector setup and you weld, essentially you weld everything together. So these are, are different ways in which you can utilize CNC machining. So what I'm gonna focus on is I'm gonna focus on designing the upper and the lower plenum as CNC pieces that we can machine out. This could simply mean that we take the formed or the surface bodies and we, uh, we sort of develop those. However, I am going to include the runners in that conversation. And part of the reason is just for us to sort of understand the process. So not necessarily how you would build this because the size of billet or the raw material would be huge but it still gives us an idea of, of how we can approach a design problem like this. So for this example, again, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing the plenum and the runners top and bottom. However, I am going to have a portion of the, the plenum plate, or the, I'm sorry, the, the plate at the head, that is going to also be CNC machined as its own piece. So we need to incorporate a lip that the runners can slide into so we can weld them together and the injector bung and all that information. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna carry on with the same data set. You can go to the description of the, in the video and you can download this, which does include the first intake that we designed as well as the second one here. So you've got all of those in there. And again, word of caution, if you didn't start with the first video in the series, this is using some very basic general numbers. We started with a picture of a gasket for the intake manifold and that was sort of adjusted to be sized appropriately, but I would not recommend that you take this design and just go manufacture it because it's strongly recommended that you build it based off of numbers of actual parts that you have. So this is just a general process, but you can still go back to some of those original sketches and you can modify some of those values and variables to make sure that it does fit the design you want. So for example, we've got the location of each port, the bolt holes, and if you have measurements for all that, then theoretically you can make some adjustments and have everything update. So with that word of caution out of the way, let's get started. Now, last time what we did was we took everything that we had done and we sort of did a copy and paste new. Now paste new allows us to create a version that has all of the information in it. However, 
it does not retain a link back to the original. So this plenum was copied and we sort of just used it as the starting point. Now we could do that again, or we can start from scratch. It really just depends on your workflow, where you're starting and, and where you're working. Because we already have the injector bung angles and all that sort of set up and decided, it might be easier to do a copy and paste, but the whole intention of these videos is to learn. So what we're gonna do for this example is we're going to start essentially from scratch. We've got the two plates here. We've got the plate at the head and we've got the throttle body plate where we want it. We're gonna use those as the basis going forward. So I'm gonna get started by creating a new component. This new component is going to be my CNC plenum. So I'm just gonna call this CNC plenum. And now it's activated. Now the, the trick to this is we need to make a different version of the head flange. The throttle body plate is fine, but the head flange itself is not because we wanna make a CNC version of it. So activate the top level. We're gonna take the head flange, we're gonna right click and we're gonna copy that. And then we'll select the top level, right click and we'll paste new. And again, when we paste new, we're just gonna say okay to put it wherever it, it is at the current time. And now we have a copy of this. So I'm gonna change this name from uh, just head flange to head flange CNC. So now we can adjust, modify, change this head flange as much as we want, and it will have no effect on the original one that's designed for more of a DIY or, you know, just getting it water jet because it's completely flat. This does unfortunately leave out the references to things like the injector bungs that we already worked so hard for, but I'll show you a trick to bring those back in when we're ready. So the, the first thing that I want to do is I want to modify this. Now, generally, when you have something that is designed for CNC machining, you have to really consider the raw stock size, and it's going to drastically change the amount that you're going to pay for these parts. Now, if you have your own CNC machine in your garage, then that's amazing, and you can you know, really save on some of these types of projects. However, in general, CNC machining something like this is going to be relatively expensive. Now, there are certain cars and designs, and for this, I'm gonna go ahead and just hide the throttle body plate, but there are certain, well, really motorcycles, more so than cars, that really you can break these down to individual pieces because of the way that they attach. With a car, however, the bolt spacing is not set up in a way that we have at least two bolts for each port, so we are going to have to keep it one large plate. But again, we wanna keep in mind the, the thickness of the material. So the way that I'm gonna get started, because I'm already happy with what we have here, of course, you could round the corners off. Those are minor details that I'm not really worried about, but I wanna select the face and I wanna start a new sketch. When I do that, the sketch automatically brings in all of these different ports and all of the holes, all the information that we really need. So what this tells me is I can come in with my offset tool I can select this and I can create an offset version of it, let's say five millimeters. And now I have a, a thick wall that I can extrude out that will allow me to do things like slide a runner into it and give me a little bit more material to deal with things like the injector bumps. So while this is great, this does give me the inside profile that I want, the thing that's missing here is a little bit more material around where the injector goes. And I actually want that to be square. So I'm gonna use my line tool. I'm gonna to find where this transition happens, that fillet in the corner. I'm just gonna draw a line straight up, straight over, and then down on the other side. I'm gonna hit escape. Then I wanna make sure that this one is vertical. I'm gonna hit escape again. And we can either give this a dimension or we can shift or control select that arc and we can make them tangent and that'll fully define that for me. I'm gonna hit escape again. And now what we can do is we can select one of these, we can turn it into construction, which means that when we select this profile, it's gonna automatically include everything. So you can do the same thing for these little arcs here, hitting X on the keyboard or selecting the construction option in the sketch palette. We can fill it this after the fact as a feature on the solid body, or we could do it in the sketch. I typically will do that as a feature simply because it really messes with the constraints and the definition of some of the, the lines that you have. So it makes it a bit more difficult to make a sketch. Also, because we know that we've got 86 millimeter port spacing, I don't need to draw this four different times. I could pattern it 
as a sketch, or I can do it as a feature after the fact. Now, since we are gonna be including fillets on the feature after the fact, that's when I'm gonna do it. So we're gonna finish the sketch. We're gonna use extrude, which is E on the keyboard, and we want to extrude this piece out. We need it to come out far enough that we can incorporate the injector into it. And you will notice that there is something that is gonna be causing a problem here. If we take a look at this, we really don't want this portion of the port to be open. Now, just grabbing the sketch, it seemed like that was a good idea. But as we start to extrude, because we are going to be CNC machining the injector bung at an angle, we really don't need this big open port here like we do if we are water jetting this. So this tells me that I wanna cancel this and I wanna go back to that last sketch and I wanna edit this. And the reason I wanna do that is because I want to bring this arc all the way over how it was originally. Now, if that's tricky to do, one thing you can do is you can select that profile and you can turn it into construction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn all this stuff into construction, hitting X on the keyboard, and then I'm gonna use my create slot and I'm gonna do a center to center slot. So we'll just go from here to here and we'll drag it out until we snap to one of our points. You'll notice that if I hit escape, I can still scale this. So what we wanna do is we wanna select one of those points control select the edge on the original and make them coincident. So that'll fully define that. And now when we select this profile, it's gonna just fill in that entire block. Now, in reality, what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this in both directions because I wanna fill that geometry in on the back as well. So we're gonna do an extrude with that profile. I'm gonna start by saying two sides because I want two different directions. The first side, we're gonna say two object and go to the back but we're gonna join it together. We wanna to make sure that we're just filling in that porthole. And then the other direction, what we're gonna do is, it's gonna to have to be a negative value. You see the arrows pointing the wrong way. So the first direction really could have just been a positive value that we wanted to include, but I need to bring this out far enough that I have enough material to deal with the injector. So it looks like probably about 15 millimeters is gonna be okay. And then we can say okay and finish that. So now we need to think about where those injectors are. So you can see that the injectors are a little bit further away, um, but that's okay. What I wanna do is I wanna taper this face right here, and I wanna get it at the same angle that we had the injectors before, which is essentially 45 degrees. So we can do that by going to modify chamfer, and then we can just begin pulling this in. And you can see that it's not the right angle. Let's go ahead and rotate this around the other way so we're not looking through everything. You can see that it's not the same angle that we ended up using. If you want it at a different angle, what we can do is we can change the type to distance and angle. And then what this allows us to do is it allows us to change the angle. You can see here 30 degrees, and then we just need to make it big enough for that 14 millimeter injector. So that looks pretty good so far. I'm gonna say, okay. And then I'm gonna hide the original plenum. And now this gives me a face to work with for creating that 14 millimeter hole. I'm gonna use my line tool to add a reference line from midpoint to midpoint. I'm gonna hit escape, I'm gonna turn that into construction. And then we're gonna use our circle tool, which is C on the keyboard. And we wanna see if we can fit a 14 millimeter hole there. You can see that we can, that's gonna be the size for the injector. Also note that we could make this a little bit thinner. It's quite a bit wider than it really needs to be, but this could also incorporate dual injectors. We could push it a little bit wider and you could run two different injectors there. So we're gonna finish the sketch. We're gonna extrude that through. I'm gonna say distance through all. And you can see that it does pop all the way through. And it essentially gives us that same initial shape that we had. Now, if we're talking about CNC machining these, we have to think about the fabrication or really the functionality that we have in the specific machine. So if you're doing this all on a three axis CNC machine, that means you're gonna have to have a jig that can set this up at 30 degrees to drill those holes. Those could also be done on a drill press. There are specific drills that you can get just for drilling injector bungs. And as long as you can make a drill fixture to do that, you can CNC machine the rest of it. This tapered face could be done with uh, three or two and a half or three axis machining by using a tapered bit or just by running back and forth over it. And then maybe taking a spot drill and just you know, spotting the center of that location, even though the angle would be wrong. 
that'll give you a good reference for where that needs to be. So now that we have that, let's add a couple fillets. I'm gonna round off these corners here, as well as these upper corners. Uh, this always seems to get in the way. And just to make it look a little bit better, keeping in mind if we are CNC machining this, the radius value on this internal radius here, we wanna make sure that it's large enough that we can get a tool in there and actually uh, cut that geometry. So I'm gonna say, okay, another thing that I do want to do, and this doesn't necessarily have to be in the file itself, is I want to chamfer at least, let's say 0.1 millimeters. Now let's go a bit bigger, 0.5. Uh, and essentially what this is, it's a deburr step. That deburr right there will allow us to come back and just clean up the edge so it's not super sharp. That's typically what you want to do on a, a machined part, but that doesn't necessarily have to be in the 3D model. So keep in mind that that is something that we would do at the toolpath level, but it doesn't necessarily have to be designed in here. If you want this to blend in a little bit, we could add a fillet at the bottom. Again, from a manufacturer standpoint, you wanna think about the tools that you have access to. So that would be done traditionally with a bullnose mill. So it's essentially a square mill with a small radius at the bottom. So you would wanna make sure that the radius value you use matches that. And again, in reality, it's easier if we leave that corner square for programming the toolpath and then we just use a bullnose mill that will leave that small radius value there. Really just depends on, uh, you know, if you're the one that would be programming it or, or, you know, dealing with those aspects. On the back side as well, we would wanna think about deburring this. We probably wanna take a, a ball nose mill down. And again, I'm assuming that we're talking about a three axis vertical CNC machine, but I'm gonna leave these very sharp. I'm not gonna worry about deburring or rounding those out. Just keep in mind, again, it's very much based on machine functionality. All we really need is a hole to be able to pop that injector through. So theoretically, what we have is something that exactly matches the outside diameter of the runner. Now, that is obviously not gonna work because the runner doesn't fit inside of there. But since we are designing the runners ourselves, the inside diameter of that is gonna be fine because we're gonna be designing the pieces that are going to fit exactly to this. Now, what I would say to that, uh, typically what you would wanna do is you would wanna add a small lip to help locate things together. So I'm gonna select the space, gonna do another extrude, but I wanna do a small offset. I'm gonna say two millimeters and then extrude that out using E on the keyboard, I'm just gonna pull it in distance of two millimeters, just a very minor step, but that will give us sort of an alignment piece. So when we're fitting stuff together, we have that little step that'll help align all of our parts. Now that we have all of those additional features that we added, what we wanna do at this stage is we want to take all of these features and I'm gonna control select them. And I wanna to try to pattern them. Now this can work very easily sometimes and other times it can fight us. So let's give it a shot first by patterning the features. When I pre-select them, it automatically sets the type to feature. The direction is going to be the X direction. You could also select a linear edge. It doesn't really matter, but keep in mind if you select an edge and somehow downstream you decide to change it earlier in the timeline, then you might have to fix or update this. We're gonna use the spacing option we have four instances that are gonna be spaced at 86 millimeters. So if I start to pull these out, you can see what's happening is it's grabbing the original plate as well. It, it has that feature. So I'm gonna deselect that and make sure that I do only bring in the, the new features that I want. So somehow it was automatically grabbing that plate. We definitely don't wanna do the entire plate. We just want to do those little features. The preview doesn't look right, but I'm gonna go forward with it. I'm just gonna see if it works. I'm gonna do 86 millimeters, adjust as the compute option and say, okay. And you can see it's fine. So sometimes you just need to double check your selections, make sure that you do have the right thing selected. And the preview, you know, in some cases it might be a little bit off, but uh, it looks like it worked out okay. Another thing I do want to mention and think about here is something that I, I haven't done on any of the other manifolds and uh, we're, we're probably not gonna do on this one either, is I haven't tackled the, the threaded mounting points for the fuel rail. Now, typically 
you would have uh, injectors that are held in with a fuel rail. There are different types of injectors that, that could be held in by themselves, but in most cases you have a fuel rail that bolts down with you know, two bolts and is, is held in place. I'm not gonna go all the way down that, that road. Uh, hopefully if you've followed along and you've made an intake manifold like this, then you should be able to create that where it's needed. It will be at the same angle as these injectors. So all you really need to do is create a sketch based off of those faces and just put the, you know, put it centered wherever the injectors are and then locate it however you're, you're gonna be bolting your fuel rail up. A lot of times what ends up happening when you create a custom intake is oftentimes you're gonna get fuel rail stock and you're gonna make your own fuel rail as well. So again, I don't really wanna get into also including that because it's really not the focus here. All right, we haven't saved in a while, so let's go ahead and save, make sure we don't lose any of our work and let's think about the next step. Again, in the interest of thinking about this holistically. We wanna think about how much raw stock we're going to need. We already added a lot of material just by having to include these pieces on the intake plate, on the, on the head itself. We could certainly add more detail. We could add some ribs. We can add all kinds of things in here because at the end of the day, we're already gonna have that much material and spending time just removing it, making chips is essentially going to be a waste of, of money and time. So you have to think about the size of material, the size of raw stock that makes sense and what you wanna do with your design. So with that in mind, with the intake runners themselves, we wanna think about them as individual pieces. And again, everything is gonna get welded together. That doesn't mean that you couldn't just join all the bodies together, top and bottom, and machine everything in sort of a half, but if you're gonna be designing something that you wanna manufacture yourself, it really makes more sense for the runners to, to be sort of by themselves, either top or bottom and welded together, or just if they're short enough, you can actually machine out the inside. Uh, so again, those are things that you need to consider. We are not really going to worry as much about that, but um, just keep in mind that you should really be thinking about these things. For us to design the runners, I'm gonna design them as a whole piece and then split them in half later. They're not gonna be attached to this plenum plate or the, the head plate, but um, just keep in mind that we are gonna split them later. They will be split down. So what I wanna do is I wanna start by again, selecting this face. And uh, actually, you know what? Let's undo that. Uh, I'm, kind of backtracking here. Uh, we did make a component for the plenum itself, and this was the component for the flange. So I am gonna activate the component for the plenum because that's where we wanna get started. And I do wanna show that throttle body plate just so we know kind of where our goal is, where we're going. But even though I don't have this body inside of the component I'm working on, I can still sketch on its face. So I can select it and create a new sketch and bring those references in as well. So I'm gonna use project include, which is project include is P on the keyboard to project. And what I wanna do is I wanna bring in this inside lip because the selection of that face automatically brought this in for me, but I wanna bring in this inside section as well, because again, we are gonna to have to extrude that little lip. That's gonna be important to us. I'm gonna say okay to that. And then I need to think about the outside shape here because obviously this goes up to the injector and I don't need to extrude that as the runner. So I'm gonna go to create and I wanna use my center to center slot again. I'm gonna go between these two points and to the outside. Again, escape to get off of that tool and we're gonna make sure that they match. We can use coincident. We could also make the radii values equal. Uh, in this case, coincidence is just gonna work fine. And uh, now we've got the outside shape, we've got the inside shape, and then we've got that extra little lip there that we can extrude. Now, keep in mind that this goes pretty close to where that injector is. Uh, it's, it's actually a, a fairly perfect match. So that means that we should probably think about raising the injector a little bit. But there's a benefit to working parametrically on a design. If I go back to the head flange, and I go back to the sketch that was used to create this, this tangency right here, I can delete that and pull this line up a little bit and then simply give this edge a distance. So D on the keyboard for my dimension, I'm gonna say 15 and a half millimeters. 
Now the chamfer should still update fine. Everything else should update fine. That hole for the, the injector was directly in the center of that face because we created a reference line. And now you can see that we've got a little bit more height there. So when we extrude this runner out and we weld them together, we're not welding directly in here. But again, that is another concern that you need to think about. Depending on your level of skill with, in this case, TIG welding aluminum, you might want that injector to be further away. And that way you, you're not risking melting things together. Uh, so again, these are things that we need to think about. And they're things that you should really think about before you get too far in your design. So the way that we're gonna handle that is I'm gonna go back to the head flange and I wanna hide the CNC plenum, hide the sketch, hide the throttle body plate. And what I wanna do is I want to extrude this out a bit further. So I'm gonna select this face and I'm gonna use that center to center slot again. And we'll find the center points in here and drag that out. And once again, I'm gonna use coincident between that point and this one here. So this gives me that full profile. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna extrude that out. So E on the keyboard to extrude that out. We can leave the flat on the top and uh, if we want to, but I'm gonna select that little piece there. And I'm gonna pull this out just a couple of millimeters, five millimeters, but we don't wanna leave that little gap in the back. So I'm gonna set this to two sides. And on the back side, we wanna to start to go out, but we still wanna join things together. We wanna to make sure that it goes all the way into that section right there. We'll say okay. And now you can see that we've got that little sort of chamfered section. If we want to, we can also do a modify and fill it on here and roll that back just a little bit to round it off. Uh, it makes things a little bit more complicated when we start to manufacture. So you do have to think about these things as well. Um, but we do want to make sure that these parts can be manufactured. So a small fillet there means it will bring a bull nose in. Now, if you're looking at this, that only affected the first one. And that's because we added them after we had done our pattern. And the extra little bit that we did here, all that needs to happen before the pattern. So what we can do is we can drag these before our pattern. We're gonna take each feature one at a time. We're gonna get some warnings. Uh, don't worry too much about the warnings. They're going to be related to the selection of that face for our sketch and the plenum. But now we need to update our pattern. So we're gonna right click, edit the pattern. Under objects, I'm gonna hold down control on a PC. And I just wanna select those fillets and those other features, say okay. And now you can see all of them have been updated. So now we've got all those little features there. We can go back to our plenum. And this is where we need to make a change because the face that we selected originally, uh, it no longer exists. So we're gonna right click and redefine our sketch plane. We're gonna select this face here and say, okay. And now we need to see that we've got some green edges here. And these green edges are going to be references that were lost. Now, if we right click on this, I'm gonna edit the sketch. And there's like a green point up here. I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna delete this inside, just select and delete. There are ways that we can reassociate some of this, but honestly, it's gonna take more time to figure out where the references are than for you to just come in and redraw this. So you can see that we no longer need this outside slot that we created. So I can delete that. And there will be an extra line here. And when you have two lines, if I select one and delete it, sometimes you'll get lucky. I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo. If not, you can hold down the left mouse button and it will show you the multiple sketch lines. So sometimes you might need to, to sort of toggle through to find the right one. All right, so now we do still need to bring that inside lip in because we are going to extrude that as well. So P on the keyboard or project include project. We'll bring this inside section and we'll say, okay. So now that we have all of that, the other aspect of this we need to think about is, are we just gonna do a straight runner or are we going to get creative and let's say taper it outwards? So if we wanna taper it outwards or we wanna create a runner that um, is as wide as possible or, or sort of necks out, then we are able to do that with this method because we're gonna be cutting them in half and we're gonna be machining the inside and the outside. There are some considerations from a flow perspective. 
Now, the straight runner versus a tapered runner, you aren't really going to see very many gains, the, uh, the, especially on a boosted application. If you're turbocharging, then you're probably not going to see much of a difference straight versus a slight taper. Where you will see a difference is in the fact that if you're running a normally aspirated setup or if you've got a really big turbo that has some lag, then when you're talking about naturally aspirated, the larger opening at the plenum is going to help you get more air in. It's going to uh, effectively have a larger cross section. So you're feeding it more fresh air from the plenum. That can be an issue if you make it too large and it starts to have a scavenging effect from the port next to it. This is a, a very big topic and you basically need a PhD in mathematics to, to really look deep dive into this. But uh, in this case, we're going to be focusing more on just general guidelines. But think, think about long term what you want to do with your designs and how you can achieve that. There are lots of books out there, lots of resources. Um, Fusion, unfortunately, doesn't have CFD, but even if it did, you're generally talking about steady state conditions for most CFD programs, which means that we're not taking into account any of the resistance that happens when the valve slams or if you've got you know, cylinder number two is sucking air in and you've got the other ones closed, that pressure shift that happens when you go from two to four, that has an effect, uh, especially when you're not under boost, that has an effect. So all kinds of deep dive topics that, unfortunately, I don't, I don't really plan on covering here. Um, I don't have a PhD in math, so, uh, and I don't think that anybody really wants to deep dive into those uh, equations. So for right now, we're just going to do some general stuff here. So let's go ahead and extrude this. And I want to take the inside and the outside shape, and we want to figure out how long these runners need to be. And again, we can bring back the throttle body plate. We can think about the size of our plenum, and we can figure out where these need to be. Again, keep in mind raw material. So we have to always sort of be mindful of how much material we're going to end up using for these parts. 125 seems like a good bit. I'm going to say OK. And then I want to hide the head flange. And I want to bring back the sketch we just used. And now I want to extrude that little lip. So we're going to say OK. And I want to bring this little lip out. Now, if we go back to the head flange, we can see inside of it. Because when we're dealing with Fusion 360 components, the opacity changes, uh, so you can see inside of it. And we can figure out how far that needs to be. The stop for something like this is going to be the outside face. So all of this, all this little piece is doing is it's creating sort of that smaller shape. But you do have to really think about any gaps or, or anything that's going to be created if we leave a small opening there. Uh, for us, I'm going to just do five millimeters, and I'm going to leave it at that. But keep in mind that these are our topics and things that we should think about. I also want to reuse that. I'm going to select that little profile. I'm going to change the start to object, and I'm going to select this side. And then the distance is going to be five millimeters on this side as well. So we're going to use the same exact technique uh, that sort of will lip into both sides of either the, the head plate or the plenum itself when we need to weld things together. This also helps to keep us from popping holes through the material when we're trying to weld, especially if the plenum ends up being thicker, then having two sort of two layers of material can help with heat soak when you're trying to put some heat in to, to weld these things. And it also can help us prevent from creating like uh, bubbles or inclusions that happen on the inside. We want to keep the flow nice and smooth. We don't want to add a bunch of bumps inside of there. So now we have to think about do we actually want to separate this and then pattern it, or do we want to pattern it and separate it later? Because we are going to be building the manifold top and bottom as its own piece separate from these runners, then I think I'm just going to go ahead and split them right now. When we go to split them, we have to use a plane that is in the exact middle or a sketch. Now, in the past, what we've done is we've gone to a mid plane option. And because the top and bottom are flat, I can simply just select those and it'll give me a mid plane. We could also use a sketch, but then we'd have to create a sketch from the side and, and use that as our option. If a mid plane already exists for something else, we can use that as well. But you probably aren't always going to be that lucky in your designs. 
And one of the benefits of creating this midplane here is it lives inside of our CNC plenum component, and it's based off of geometry that we created in here. So now that we have that, we're going to go to modify and split body. It's on the top level by default. Body to split will be this runner. And then we can go and hide our construction plane. So if we take a look at our bodies, we've got this body one and body two. I'm going to call body one runner bottom and body two will be runner top. Before we go ahead and we pattern this, this is also a good time to think about if we want to add any features internally. Now, a lot of times when you're just using off the shelf components, you don't have any way to, to create things like veins or ribs or any plates internal to help with the flow. But since we are CNC machining these, we could add a divider plate that could help when we're on a you know normally aspirated motor or in the section where we're not on boost. So I don't really think that it's required here necessarily, but if we wanted to add one, I could just select one of these faces or the plane that we just created, and then we could create whatever shape we wanted here. So if we take a look, I'm just gonna use the line tool. If we take a look, I could create sort of this knife or, or this diamond shape. And because these are external, these the sharp corners are external, we could machine those. And what we would do is we would take some of these edges and make them horizontal. We'd make these two vertical with each other. And we'd likely add some equal constraints between these. And then what we can do is we can sort of manipulate and move this around. We can change, you know, change the characteristics of that shape. And then we can select it. We can hit E to extrude, and we can select up to object and just extrude it down here. And that will allow us to play around with having some additional shapes inside of the runners. Not something I'm gonna do here, um, at least not for the runners. The plenum might be a better spot for that, but just keep in mind that you can add as much detail as you want at this point. So for me, the runners are pretty much done. All I need to do is create a pattern. This will be a pattern of bodies because we're inside of our, our CNC plenum component. We've got the runner bottom and top. So these are the objects or the bodies that I want to pattern. We're gonna go along the X direction. I accidentally selected an edge. So I wanna make sure that I do select X. And then we're gonna have four, again, based on spacing at 86 millimeters. And that should put them in exactly the right location. So now you can see that we've got runners top and bottom and Essentially what's gonna happen is we can create these with any internal geometry we want. We can decide to use off the shelf runners if we need to, but this will allow us to sort of weld everything together. We can weld uh, these at the, si at the sides, at the seams, and weld them to the plate at the head, and weld them to the plenum. So let's do a quick save, make sure we don't lose anything here, and then let's think about the plenum shape that we want. Now, just like before, when we were using sort of the off-the-shelf plenum versus the formed or the surface-built plenum, we have to think about, again, how we're going to manufacture it. So with the, the formed plenum, what we did was we built a plate, and then we sort of attached the form version of the plenum to it. Now, we could use that exact same workflow or that same theory and just build another plate that we would then weld these two and then we build the rest of it off. But we've already kind of looked at that process and what we want to do here is we want to really explore the benefits of CNC machining. Now again, I mentioned that there are different machines, different capabilities. So thinking about a three axis machine versus a five axis machine or even a four axis machine, it, it's a really big difference in functionality. So the first plenum that we're gonna talk about is gonna focus on upper and lower halves that can be CNC machined with a three axis machine. And then if we want to, we can get into diving deeper into machines that can actually do complex internal porting and we can actually get some pretty creative runner shapes and things like that. But for right now, what we wanna do is we wanna save what we've done. Now that we've gotten to this point where we have the head flange, we have the runners, and think long and hard about how you would create the plenum shape. 
because there are obviously many different ways that we could do this. We want to make sure that we incorporate some unique features, things like uh, bell mouths or velocity stacks, things that we can't really do very easily when we're doing hand fabrication. So we're going to be talking about CNC machining, we might as well use it. So at this point, make sure that your stuff is saved. If you have any questions on what we've done so far, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.